All right, guys, we're gonna do the most popular question, hands down. It's the only thing everybody wants to know, how much do I charge? So there's a few answers to this, but we're gonna start breaking some stuff down. Now, number one, what are you selling and who are you selling it to? Because you might think that you're fixing leaky sinks. You might think that's what you're selling is the action of fixing a leaky sink. That's not what you're selling. What you're selling, if you're on this channel, what we're dedicated to is we're working for property management companies and we're trying to build a successful business, a reliable business, long-term, steady, selling the fixing of problems. That's not the fixing of a sink. Here's what's going on here. You've got a homeowner and they've said, look, I have money because I've got a rental house. I was apparently able to buy one. I have money. And I don't have time. So they went to a property manager and they said, hey, I've got money, but I don't have time. Can you take care of all the time consuming things and I will give you some money for it? And the property manager said yes. And then something broke on the house and the tenant contacted the property manager and said, hey, I have a problem. Well, now that's taking up the property manager's time. So the property manager, and you got to understand how they make their money, is they get a percentage of the rent whatever amount of money is coming in from that property somehow or another they're getting a percentage so the way they maximize their income is to have as many as possible the more properties they have the more money they make now that being said they're also not spending their money so if you're in their shoes what you have to think of is they want to have a lot of properties but a lot of properties comes with a lot of tenants and comes with a lot of problems your job is you are to the property manager what the property manager is to the homeowner. You're the problem solver. You're the person who takes what they would have had to spend time on, and hopefully if you're good at what you do, you make it so that they spend almost no time on that. This allows them to take better care of other things that they need to take care of, including acquiring more properties. So now you know what you're selling and who you're selling it to you're not selling your labor you're not just a laborer if you go and make twenty dollars an hour working for a company then you're selling your labor so what is your service worth and this means a lot of different things but what your service is worth is whatever the property manager is willing to pay you out of money that's not theirs it's what they're willing to pay to get that problem solved. That's the bottom line answer. So if they were willing to pay 500 an hour, that would be what your service is worth, but they're not. So now you gotta figure out what is my service worth to a property manager in my city for the problem that they're asking me to solve. Um, and in my opinion, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Because another question we have to ask is, what is a handyman? There is a, a negative view of a handyman. It's often a pejorative term. Even when it's not pejorative, a lot of times it's a, it's a term meant to say a guy who's not great at keeping a job, holding down a job, a guy who can't make a good living for himself otherwise, who is now out there fixing leaky sinks. You know, these are typically what homeowners think of handymen. A lot of property managers think it too, but they also know that there are better handymen and worse handymen. Being a handyman, what that should mean, hopefully for you, and you can get here if you're not here, but being a handyman is supposed to mean you generally have a wide range of tools. You generally know how to use most, if not all, of those tools very well and skillfully. It means you understand how homes are wired, how homes are plumbed, how homes are built. It means you have a general understanding of the making of a home, of the creating of a home, and therefore of the maintenance of a home. <clears throat> so that's a rare skill. A lot of people don't think it is. A lot of people think, oh, anybody can fix a leaky sink. But the truth is, that's just not true. And the guys who can... They were probably plumbers, but they don't know shit about electricity, or they don't know shit about roofing, they don't know shit about a lot of things. So your goal, if you're good at what you're doing, your goal should be, if you're not there already, to become someone who knows a little bit of everything about everything. I'm on YouTube, not every day, but almost every day. 
looking up how to do stuff. Even if it's stuff I already know how to do, I'm looking for other people's tips and tricks so I can get better and faster and more knowledgeable about it. So, let's get into the pricing. We're gonna separate this out into four different sections. First section is one-offs. And I wanna say this is most of what you'll be doing, but really this is most of what you'll be doing for a while. But as you prove yourself and as you become indispensable to these companies, uh, you're, you're gonna move <coughs> into a lot of other things. So your one-offs, what I mean by a one-off, I'm gonna go with the leaky sink again because it's just so fucking many of them. A one-off is you get a job from a property manager and it says kitchen sink leaking. And they didn't tell you if it's leaking, is it dripping from the tap? Is it leaking from the base where it mounts? Is it leaking underneath where it mounts? Is it leaking from the drain pipes? Is it leaking from the shutoff valve? Kitchen sink leaking could mean a lot of things, but it's a job you're gonna get and you're gonna get a lot of them. So how much do you charge? What if they call you and say, hey man, uh, can you fix leaky sinks? And you say, yeah. And they say, well, how much does it cost? My answer, is $125. Now, if you're new, your answer might be $80. I honestly wouldn't go under 80. I mean, if you feel like you have to say 75, it's a pretty attractive number, but what I'm trying to tell you right now is if you're trying to work for property management companies and you're a handyman and you're capable of fixing a leaky sink, there is no scenario in which you should be charging less than $80. That's that's a low get in my foot in the door price. So for one-offs, and they damn near all are, just they're all, there's so many things. Like I've got these lists that I've been making and they're super long because I want to go see what's my average pricing for everything on here. And to tell you the truth, if it's just the one item, no matter what the one item is, it seems like it's always 125 bucks. Uh, replacing a toilet is 250, you know, replacing a water heater, I don't know, 800 or something, you know, plus materials. but. So your one-offs, you're going to have what's called a trip fee. Your trip fee is going to be a set rate. And this means, and I'm going to give you the simplest example. Here's your trip fee. If they say replace the light bulb and the front porch light, you don't need to schedule with the tenant. The materials cost essentially nothing. And your only job in the world is just to pull up in front of the house and spend one minute walking to the porch light, taking the bulb out, putting the bulb in, and you're done that's $125 for me. For you, that should be a minimum of $80 because what did we talk about before? You're not charging $80. If somebody says $80 is too much to change a light bulb, they're correct. But the thing is, you didn't change a light bulb. You got paid $80 to take care of a problem, to get a tenant off of a property manager's back and to make sure that all of the people that you're serving from the property manager through the homeowner your, your job is just to make sure that they don't have to deal with this shit, and that's worth 80 bucks. So don't charge less than $80, just period, end of story. Like I said, if you've got to do 75, it's a nice, I don't know, it's, it feels like a low number, that's fine, but don't stay there. And once you start getting more and more requests, you know, when you get, because what's going to happen, you're going to get on with a company, and they're going to send you one job, and it's going to be a small, simple job. You're going to get on with them, you're going to do that one job, probably going to send them a picture of the completed job, and then they're going to send you one more job. And you're going to do that job, and you're going to send them a picture and an invoice. And then they're going to send you two jobs at the same time. And you're going to do those jobs, and then they're going to send you two more jobs, and you're going to do those jobs. And then before you know it, very quickly, if you're doing a good job, before you know it, if you are reliable... What's going to happen is you're just going to start having jobs rolling in. All They're not going to be paying attention to, okay, he did a good job, now we'll send him another. You'll quickly get to a point. There are so many bad handymen out there that if you're good, you're going to quickly get to a point where they're going to keep sending you jobs. When that starts happening, um, it's up to you how you word this. If you want to have the conversation or if your prices just come up and you wait for them to say something, but once they've decided you're a reliable guy they want to send a lot of work to, you're worth 100 easily. 100 per trip. Again, just for a fucking light bulb. It doesn't matter. You're worth 100 Don't charge less than 100 So now we're going to move on to punch lists. 
this is also for jobs that are one-off jobs that take more than an hour but seriously just all of these jobs take less than an hour but moving on to punch lists slash jobs that take more than an hour now what you're going to be looking at is you've got your trip fee plus an hourly rate property managers are going to expect an hourly rate now i'm going to be honest with you i have never done that i never ever ever have i got lucky in the first company i got on with didn't ask me for one they were happy because I was cheap and then my prices just slowly went up over time but I do not ever give an hourly rate now I understand if you're new that you may feel that you need to and you know what you may be correct I don't know I, I have lost companies that I tried to work with because I wouldn't give them an hourly rate or because I wouldn't give them some other sort of standardized pricing but my answer when they say how much do you charge my answer is I have a $125 trip fee, and then outside of that, if it's going to take longer than an hour, then it's just going to depend on what the job is, and I just, I bill fairly. Now, I didn't have a history of invoices back then. Today, my answer would, let's say I lost one of my bigger companies today and I needed to find another, what I would do is I would redact a bunch of personal info off of the invoices so it's just the job and the price and I would send them a hundred invoices and say hey here's a giant stack of everything that I've invoiced for like the last five months and then let them go through it and decide so I don't have a real good answer for you on should you give them an hourly rate but what I'm gonna tell you is that if you do again you should be at a minimum $80 trip fee. Within a few months, you should be at a minimum $100 trip fee. And yes, that means you might have to change companies because the company you're with won't want to pay you the 100 but somebody else will. So $100 trip fee plus, and this is the number you got to come up with. There's a lot of guys doing $100 trip fee plus 40 bucks an hour, plus 50, plus 60. Um, I don't do that. Here's where you're trying to get, though, just so you know. Where you're trying to get is a hundred dollar trip fee and a hundred dollars an hour <clears throat> and it'd be good if you got to a hundred twenty five dollar trip fee and a hundred an hour but that's where you want to be so the question how much do i charge for one-offs hundred hundred dollar trip fee 80 minimum try to get up to 125 as soon as you can for more than a one-off 125 dollar trip fee or a hundred or an 80 wherever you're at somewhere in that range plus i'm gonna say don't ever do it for less than 50 an hour and that's that's not enough money because if you're doing it for 50 an hour they're going to start sending you all the bigger jobs which you might think is great but now you're going to be spending all day every day making 50 bucks an hour when you should be making 100. so for punch list the answer is if you can avoid it don't give an hourly fee and if you have to give an hourly fee don't do it for less than 50, but I'd be at 60 or 70 or 80, even if I was new, and eventually try to move into the point where you just charge what you charge, because that's what I do. They send me jobs, I send them invoices, nobody has any agreements about any rates, but that's because I've done a great fucking job for these guys for long enough that I can do that. Next, move outs. These are kind of my favorites. I love move outs. Um, I make a tiny bit less money on them, I think. But it's a, a much more enjoyable day for me, and it doesn't require so much work when I get home, and I can put that time into my family. So with move-outs, uh, currently I get long lists, 20 to 30 items, of uh, remove all the nails and screws from the walls and patch and paint throughout, replace this interior door, replace these doorknobs, uh, replace, install some new door stops. So here's what I do when I do a move-out. This is very important. I've got a system down. So when I do a move out, I show up, come in the door, grab my notepad where I've got a printout of all of the work they've requested, and I walk the whole house. Uh, typically, I actually pick a wall, right or left, and just follow that wall all the way around the whole house. I check every faucet. I check sink stoppers. I look under sinks for signs of leaks. I check everything. When I've got my list down of more stuff that they didn't find, I call them and I inform them of jobs that I think are going to be bigger than just a move out that I might make a separate work order for, things that they just may want to know that I see coming up in the future because something's old or worn, or if it's better for me to take care of it now instead of having a job for it later, uh, and I get them to approve any extra work that I found. 
And then I'm taking my list and I've got this column over here and this column is a list of all the jobs. Then I make a second column and in that column I go beside each individual line item and I write down in numbers of minutes what is a reasonable amount of time for it to take to do this. Assuming I have the tools and materials what is the reasonable amount of time each one of these should take? Go down to the bottom, add them all up, divide by 60, now I've got how many hours? Then I multiply that times 100, so if it says it should be 8 hours of work, then it's $800. If it says it should be 20 hours of work, it's $2,000. So let's take this hypothetical job, very long list, my numbers add up and tell me $2,000. That's the max I'm going to charge. That's not what I'm going to charge but that is the maximum that I'm going to charge. And then I get to work, and I take whatever tools and materials I already have with me, and I fix everything that can be fixed. I work on every single item until I reach that stopping point where I either need a tool or a material to finish that job. And each step of the way, all the way through, I'm making a very detailed list. You do not want to go to Home Depot twice. Going to Home Depot costs you an hour. If you're making 100 an hour, that means going to Home Depot a second time just took $100 out of your pocket for that day, and that's stupid. That's $100. So make your list thoroughly and accurately. If you patched a wall and you need to paint, you write on the list paint, and you at the same time, you get your paint sample, and you put it in a little Ziploc bag or something where you can keep it so you don't lose it because you're going to be pissed when you get back from Home Depot and you realize you forgot to get the matching paint, or when you get to Home Depot and you realize you didn't bring your paint sample. So do all the work you can, make your list, go to Home Depot, come back. Your goal, because you want to charge a lot of money. You want to make a lot of money and you want to charge a lot of money. To do that, you need to be worth it. So what makes you worth it is that system and that routine and that knowing that you're not wasting anybody's time. From the minute you open that door, you are not only billing, but you are earning what you're billing. So you go to Home Depot, get all your stuff, come back, finish up the work, look at the clock, say, oh, okay, well, I finished this up in eight hours, so that's $800. So we're gonna charge a max of 2,000, we're gonna charge a minimum of 800, because that's the actual amount of time it took, including Home Depot time. <laughs> and then we're gonna look at our list and we're gonna say, okay, well, what do I charge, 800 or 2,000? So now you go down the list and you say, how much of the jobs were plumbing? How much of these jobs were electrical? Was any of it electrical troubleshooting or, tr or plumbing troubleshooting? How much of it was outside in the extreme heat or the extreme cold or getting rained on? How much of it required me to crawl into a, an attic full of insulation? And I'm gonna come up with basically an inconvenience factor. Like, was this a sweet fucking job that you enjoyed doing? Or did this job kill you and you're going home smelling like a toilet covered in crap roaches everywhere I mean there's you're gonna find some bad properties that you're not gonna want to be in. I had to come home once and change because I had to lay in a vanity changing a faucet that had some rusted hardware from below and I had to lay in a wet vanity and the piss and shit from the toilet that it overflowed had soaked up into the vanity and I was laying on it and my back burned. Like, you're gonna have those jobs. That's the job that you're gonna charge the 2000 for that job, not the 800 So that's how you're gonna, how much do I charge? If you're doing a move out, I just told you. You're gonna make your list, you're gonna do all your work, you're gonna figure out what would be reasonable for each one, just reasonable, and that's gonna give you your max, and then your actual, hopefully, is gonna be your min, because you're trying to be really fucking good and get better and better at this over time. And where you charge in between those is going to be based on how shitty that job was. And then finally, at the end, estimates. Now, when I say estimates, anything that I've gone over already, you might receive a request for an estimate for. Now, I'm going to tell you again, my policy may not be your policy when you start out. But you need to get here, and you need to get here fast. And honestly, if I was in your shoes, I would make this my policy starting out so that I don't ever have to go back to somebody and tell them my policy changed. I charge for estimates. I do not do free estimates. I just don't. That time that it takes me, that's my time. When you ask me for an estimate, you're asking me for my time. A business is asking my business, can you please give me some of your time? That's a service they're requesting. 
that time is worth something because that's time that I have to take away again from my family when I come home. So I charge for estimates and here's the deal that I have with my property management companies. What they understand now is that if they request an estimate, they already know ahead of time because I've told them enough times. Say they've got a list of five things. I look at that list and I say, hey, can I do, can I fix the toilet while I'm there? And then the other four things give you the estimate on. And they say yes. And now they've gotten to the point that typically what they'll do is they'll send me a, a request for an estimate. And then they will also send me an actual job to do at that same property because they know that if I can at least do one job while I'm there that I can invoice for, whatever extra time it takes me to go measure a bunch of things real quick and the time I spend at home, I'm not going to charge them for that. But if I'm going to get in my vehicle and drive somewhere at an appointment, or if it's vacant either way, if I'm going to show up, I'm going to charge $125. So that's just something you should know right off the bat at the beginning. Don't be one of those free estimate guys and they'll tell you, oh, just wrap it into the price. You know what? That's lying. You shouldn't need to lie. Nobody, it's not an immoral lie, but you shouldn't need to lie. You shouldn't need to pretend like the job costs 800 when it really costs 700 to make up for the estimate. You should be able to say my time is valuable because they need to understand this. Your time is valuable and they need to pay you for that time. So, how do we do estimates? How do we, how do we decide what we're going to charge? Now, depending on the size of the job, if they say give me an estimate on replacing a faucet, I just tell them 125 bucks. I don't need to go there. If they say give me an estimate on a punch list, if it's a four or five item punch list, a lot of times I can look at that and I can be like, okay, I'm going to replace a ceiling fan, I'm going to fix a leak in a sink, I'm going to do these things. And for like a four or five item estimate of jobs that aren't too hard, I can usually look at that and say, hey, I think I might end up doing it this cheap, but I will set a cap at this price. And sometimes they're comfortable with that. If they still want the exact estimate, that's when I say, okay, we're well, gonna have to let me do one of those five things while I'm there. And then I give them the estimate. And I mean, you can figure out how to estimate it. You can look at it and say, okay, it's gonna take me four hours, so $400, you know, it's, it's that simple, plus the materials. But obviously I don't need to tell you that you need to include what you spend on materials with your invoice. But for bigger jobs, so when I say estimates, here's what I really mean. Say somebody's water heater sprung a leak, you know, and they were out of town. So they've had like the bottom three feet of sheetrock removed all along the wall. The bottom of the vanity is rotten. You need to replace a vanity, replace sheetrock, maybe fix up some flooring. You're looking at a bigger job. Here's what I do is I go to look at it and I know it's gonna sound silly, but this is what I do. I show up and I kinda just, I look everything over and I get a sense of the scope of the work. You know, just what all am I gonna be doing? And then, very consciously, sit there and think, okay, what order would I be doing this in? Probably be best if I do this first and do that second and do this third and do that fourth. Once I've got that figured out, I literally close my eyes and I just sit back and visualize the work. I visualize day one. I visualize loading up the extra tools I'm going to need. I visualize making sure I've got everything together, checking everything, getting it all loaded. Visualize going to Home Depot with a very large list, walking through Home Depot, getting all the things I need. It's going to be a lot because it's a big job. I visualize getting to the place. I'm going to unload all of my tools and just put them in the house because it's going to be, it's too much to go in and out of the van when I'm at one place for like five days straight doing a big job. And then I visualize the work. I literally just sit there and I go through every single thing I'm going to do in my mind and I imagine how long it's going to take because I've done the work enough to have a good idea of how long it's going to take. And I start breaking things down into quarter days, half days, or full days. Now, when I'm doing these estimates, when somebody has had a, a flood and you need to do five days worth of work, when anybody needs any large project done, I'm going to tell you something. There aren't a lot of people out there to do them, and the ones that are out there doing them are, are raping people on the prices. I'm talking about like guys who are a, a company that my son worked for that was doing bathrooms for like fifteen thousand dollars and it took three guys one day to do it 
plus a few thousand dollars in materials. I'm talking about serious profits that they're making. I'm not trying to do that. Those are fly-by-night companies. Those companies soar when times are good, when the stock market is up, when everybody's got money, when housing is up. They can soar and they'll make their couple million dollars, you know, and that's, that's on them. I'm trying to form relationships with companies. I'm trying to form business relationships with other businesses that are going to last. So here's what I do. Now, on all these other jobs we've been talking about, at the moment I'm happy when I'm making 600 a day. It's not too hard for me to do seven or 800 a day. This is of course if I've planned ahead, if I don't have a bunch of drama going on in my life, if everything went well. It's not what I'm doing all the time. But what I'm saying is a well-planned, well-thought-out, well-executed day can be a seven or 800 day going around doing a bunch of one-offs and punch lists. But when it comes to these bigger jobs, I'm shooting for a thousand a day, which makes it easy because a quarter day is worth 250. So I just go through the job in my head, picture everything I'm going to do, and I break it into quarters of days or I break it into full days. I know it's going to take me a full day to put sheetrock on a ceiling in a bedroom. I know for a fact it's going to be all day for me to get all of that sheetrock up correctly. And that includes the cleaning of the studs and everything. That's a full day. So I start looking at my quarter days, half days, full days, step by step as I visualize to the end of the project. And I multiply that times 250 per quarter day, 500 per half day, 1,000 per day, however you want to look at it. And then I add about 20%, minimum 20%, because things go wrong and things come up. So that's how I do my estimates. And of course, you also need to do your materials list for the estimates to add to that. I'm just talking about labor here. And when I do my materials, it's a very similar process. As I'm visualizing everything, I'm also going through my materials and making those notes. And I'm going to Home Depot's website and I'm looking up all the damn materials that'll take you hours for a big job like that. But you add them all up and then you add 10% for taxes and then you add 20%, minimum 20% because you're going to need more things than you think you're going to need. Some things are going to be out of stock like the cheap version that you were going to get is out of stock so now you've got to upgrade to one that's twice as expensive. So add 20%, even 30 if you feel safe doing 30. And trust me, they're going to say yes because the truth is there's not enough guys out there doing it. And that brings me full circle back to the beginning, which is what are you selling? Who are you selling to? What is your service worth? What are others charging? Well, you got to understand your takeaway from this because you're going to feel uncomfortable trying to charge so much. You are worth what they're willing to pay. You're worth a lot because there aren't a lot of guys who are actual handymen. There are a lot of electricians who can also do a few other things. There are a lot of plumbers who can do a few other things. There are a lot of framers who can do a few other things. There are not a lot of guys out there who have a full complement of tools and a full complement of skills and the intelligence and the diligence and the willpower and the wherewithal and all of those other descriptors, there are not a lot of guys out there who will sit down like a business and make a business out of keeping properties that are rented, keeping them rentable. That's what you're worth. So short answer, $125 trip fee. Try to be at $100 an hour as quick as you can and don't start out at less than an $80 trip fee and say 50 or 60 an hour. Get out of that quickly. I'm not recommending you even start there. I'm just saying it's not the end of the world if you do. So there's your answer for that. Anything bigger than that, shoot for $100 an hour. Shoot for $600 a day, which means you started your first job at 9 and you ended your first, your last job at 3 because you've still got to go come home and write invoices and invoice everybody and write all your quotes and make a bunch of phone calls and do more scheduling for the next jobs. So you can get your $600 a day by thinking of it as a 9 to 3 in your vehicle, out on the town, doing the work, $600 days. That's, that's how much you should be charging. Now, if y'all have any questions, I promise you, I so far have answered every comment, every comment that's made. And there might come a day when I can't, but right now, I will answer all your questions. I will respond to every comment. So let me know if you have any questions. And super important, I know everybody beats this to death. 
please subscribe. If you found this valuable, subscribe it, like it, share it. I do a lot to make this happen. It's not easy. I am busy all day, every day, but I'm also very passionate. Once I found out that I can do this, I realized a lot of guys out there can, and I'm watching all these friends of mine who are still working regular hourly jobs, and they're making 25 or 30 an hour, and they're excited because the truth is that's good money. That's, that's nothing to scoff at. But I'm realizing that all of us, you, me, all these other men, we don't have to go make someone else money. I don't want to make someone else money. I don't want you to go making someone else money. I want you to make good money for you because if you're like me, I've got a family. I've got newborn twins. I've got a young boy and we're going to have more. And I've got an amazing wife who deserves more. And I want you to be able to provide the way that I'm learning, still currently, I'm not an expert, but learning how to provide. So do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, and know that I will respond to everything that you guys put in. Let me know what you want more videos on. I uh, don't have a lot of time. I'm trying like hell to set aside just little bits here and there when I can. But the truth is, I'm working seven days a week. And I'm making, well, I'm not working seven days a week. I consider my days home scheduling and whatnot and doing admin and making these videos to be a work day. But I am always, always this busy. So I'll try to get more out as soon as I can. Y'all have fun.